Hi everybody, my name is Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium and I want to thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to continue our discussion on mixed signal PCB design. In the last video where we left off we were talking about return current paths and how they relate to your ground plane. We're going to continue on that thread talking about ground planes and a mixed signal PCB and how important it is to talk about the return path as you do your layout and your routing. Now, tracking the return path is gonna be really critical for making sure that you're able to isolate signals in your mixed signal PCB and for making sure that you properly define ground in the system. All right, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Let's get into it. Okay, so to get started with layout and routing in your mixed signal PCB, you need to think about your ground plane and your grounding strategy. Now this is really important, uh, especially re as it relates to the last video with tracking your return path in your board. So in the previous video, you might remember when we have a trace being routed over a ground plane, it creates some displacement current, which then appears in the ground plane as your return current. And being able to track that in your ground plane is what's gonna determine whether or not you can properly isolate signals in your mixed signal PCB. So to really see how to properly do ground and define ground in a mixed signal PCB, I actually wanna talk about what you most likely should not do. And there's something that uh, older design guidelines recommend doing. And I've actually watched this particular uh, guideline create some interesting blow-ups on social media with designers arguing with each other about this. Experienced designers are all pretty pretty clear about what they, what they do, which is to make sure that you have a uniform ground plane throughout the PCB. One thing that you'll see in some design guidelines with mixed signal PCBs is to chop up the ground plane. Don't do this, and I'll explain why here in just a moment. So you'll see the design guidelines state that you should do something like this. So here we're looking into the PCB from the surface layer. This is my digital ground plane. Then they'll state to have a second ground region or ground plane, whatever you want to call it, that is your analog ground plane. Initially, if you're thinking about, hey, I need to isolate my digital signals from my analog signals, and that's all based on preventing the return path from a digital signal, from interfering with that of an analog signal, this seems to make sense. The reason is that if I, let's say, have a component here in my digital section, and then I have another component in my digital section, and I route a trace between them, where's the return current? Well, the return current is only here in this digital section. And same thing if I do this up here in my analog section. The analog return current is only gonna be in the analog section. Just from looking at it from that perspective, this seems to make sense, right? Well, I think one of the things that people do that gets them really messed up with mixed signal PCB design is they think, hey, I'm just gonna split my ground planes like this. I'm gonna route wherever the heck I feel like it, and then I don't have to worry about signal integrity. And that's where people get into trouble and create an EMI problem. And so my company's actually been asked to rework boards that have had this type of grounding strategy implemented, but they can't pass EMC testing. Where do you think the first thing we look is? We look at the ground planes and see if they've split them like this. And inevitably what they'll do is they'll have a component in their analog section. The component in the analog section needs to somehow interface with something in the digital section. So what do they do? They route a trace from the analog section into the digital section. And so it's this region here in between the two sections where you create an EMI problem, because now you don't have a clearly defined return path in the system. And so the return path here could really be anywhere. It's actually really hard to predict where exactly the return path is going to be. It could be in the enclosure. It could be literally in the ground. That's why we call ground ground. It could be some other conductor that's somewhere nearby. You, you don't exactly know where it is. The point is the ground uh, return current is definitely not below this trace. And so this is where you start to create EMI problems either emission of EMI or excessive reception of EMI from some external source. And then this is what causes people to not pass EMC testing. And if you have, let's say, a wireless product, you have some other product uh, that you're actually gonna put onto the market for, uh, for purchase by consumers, has to pass EMC testing. Don't do this with your ground planes. Remember, the whole point in a mixed signal PCB is that you have an analog section that 
interfaces somehow with a digital section. But if you try and separate the ground planes like this, you're gonna create an EMI problem because there is no clearly defined return current as you do this routing between the two sections. Now, you might say, well, hey, let's just say I have just a digital section and I have just an analog section and they never interact with each other. So let's say I've got my, you know, my trace here and I've got my analog comp components interacting with each other and I've got my digital components interacting with each other. And then I've got my power inputs here got my power inputs here, so here's my plus, here's my minus. What do we have here? We basically have two totally separate devices. They just happen to be assembled on the same piece of PCB laminate. So why would you even do this? There's no point. So this is not really a mixed signal system. This is one analog system and then one totally separate digital system. So there's really no point to do this. Nobody does this. When you build a mixed signal system, you have some interaction between these two. And the way this is set up, there is no interaction. You're not sending any signals from the analog side to the digital side or vice versa. So the other thing that people will sometimes do, I'm just gonna leave my power inputs right here, but you'll, the other thing you'll see people recommend doing is they'll say, well, if you just bridge it like this, then you're gonna be okay. I've only got my analog stuff over here. I've only got my digital stuff over here and I can still route across this section, which technically is okay. I mean, you will see some people say like, oh, you should never do this on the PCB laminate. But you know, I could have my board outline go like this. And you can't tell me that just because I cut out some of the board outline here, the system is gonna work. But if I fill this in with board outline, or this is occupied by PCB laminate, that suddenly it's not going to work. So this is okay too, but again, nobody really does this. There's kind of no point to create a board like this unless you had some sort of enclosure element or something going right here, which would be really strange and kind of impractical. So what are we supposed to do? Well, what you should do is just have a uniform ground plane. And it's okay to separate things by functional area or functional block into these different sections. So up here in the top half, I've got a lot of analog stuff, and this can be my analog circuitry. Down here in the bottom half, I can have just my digital stuff. This can be just digital circuitry. And they all share a ground plane. And just because they share a ground plane doesn't mean that my digital signals are automatically gonna corrupt all my analog signals or vice versa. It's all about, are we tracking the return paths or, uh, around different interconnects and making sure that we're not bringing them too close to digital and vice versa. So in your mixed signal layout, this is okay to do. Just use a fully uniform ground plane and don't bother with this business of cutting up ground planes. The reason is that usually when people are cutting up ground planes, they're not routing over it incorrectly. You can put a slot or something like this, you know, maybe you've got some kind of odd shaped ground plane. Like that's okay. The problem is that usually when people do this, they then tend to route over it, which is the thing you shouldn't do. So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of comments on this and invariably there are comments on this topic because it is really fundamental. The main point here is just use a, a fully uniform ground plane for everywhere in your system. Don't deal with this business of trying to cut up a ground plane into different sections. There's always the risk that you don't do it correctly. Or if you leave these gaps in your, in your ground area, there's always the risk that you route too close or route over them, and then you have EMI problems. With that, I wanna thank everyone for watching the video. Please leave your comments below. I'm really interested to see what people have to say. I'm sure someone's gonna say, I've routed over gaps and never had a problem. Someone else is gonna say, I've routed over gaps and always had a problem. It's always an interesting discussion. So we really hope to see that on this video. I've got some links in the description below that are gonna talk about how to track return current and what happens in mixed signal PCBs. And I wanna thank everybody for watching. Don't forget to call your fabricator.